Hello everyone and welcome to New Jersey Coasters. This is the start of a series trial I did last year, Coaster Reviews. So I did Jersey Devil Coaster and Gale Force. So if you want to view those, click the links in the description now uh, before you watch this. Um, but today we are going to be discussing another shore roller coaster and one of the most famous, the Great Nor'easter or Fly the Great Nor'easter over at Maury's Piers in Wildwood, New Jersey. The SLC or Suspended Looping Coaster is a coaster model born out of a need for a cheaper alternative to the BNM Invert. The first inverted coaster opened back in 1992 with Batman the Ride at Six Flags Great America and it was a huge success and it doesn't make sense why Vekoma wanted it on this. Vekoma boomerangs uh, were one of the largest, most popular coaster models for a while, and Vekoma had a pretty big knack for creating clonable, affordable rides. So what, they weren't smooth, Parks just wanted something to bring in people. It's much cheaper than the B&M counterpart. So the first SLC was built in 1994 as El Condor at Wallaby Holland, and while it was not nearly as smooth as a B&M, it was still successful for the park, and it seemed Maury's peers wanted it on that success. The Great Nor'easter opened in 1995 on the original Maury's Pier, Surfside Pier, and was the second inverted coaster in New Jersey. This ride had most of the characteristics for an SLC. Five inversions, that being a rollover, a sidewinder, and a double inline twist. But this ride was a little different, and it is classified as a custom SLC. The ride's station location is next to the transfer track, meaning the ride's station does not line up with the lift hill like a normal SLC, and has to dip down and turn to reach it. The ride also has a much shorter brake run than most SLCs, as the holding brake location is where the station is. Another major difference is the ride's support structure. This is almost completely different from other SLCs, as the ride was designed to be much more compact to fit the pier. The ride goes in between water slides and over a lazy river, as the Maurice family wanted to invest to keep the ride alive for future generations. This meant installing brand new trains. These trains, new for 2008, were vest restraint trains that helped save riders from headbanging and helped make the ride more enjoyable. But this was not enough for the Maurice family, as in 2016 through 2017, the park retracted up to 90% of the ride. While they could not fix the transitions, Vekoma did provide new track with more precision engineering. The ride was 10 times smoother than ever before. The ride was so smooth that the first ever train after the refurbishment was filled with grandmothers after the marketing campaign, so smooth even a grandmother can ride. Now before we get into the ride, let's talk about the no loose article policy. Due to the close contact with water attractions, everything must be put in a locker. Granted, Maury's does provide free lockers for all guests out of the name of safety, and you will also have to go through a metal detector before going into the station, so be aware before you board to take everything out of your pockets and put them in a locker. Your ride experience starts as you make a right out of the station and ascend the 115 foot tall lift hill. With your feet dangling and no catwalk underneath, it's a pretty cool sensation, and most SLCs have that. You will then start to crest an 115 foot tall lift hill, about 6 feet taller than a normal SLC, and the drop has a beautiful view. The ocean's right in front of you with the beach to the left and the right, it's just marvelous. That won't last long as you're about to twist down a 95 foot drop. From there you'll enter a rollover element, which is very similar to a sea serpent. This element is full of hang time and in the back row has a lot of whip. Depending if you're in the front or the back, you may be thrown into the element or pulled out of it very hard. This element goes near feet, as I mentioned before, from a few water slides. The best view of Nor'easter is actually from this water slide structure, and it's amazing. I've gotten to go up there a few times, and the views of the whole ride are outstanding. From there, you will go into the next element. It's a heavily banked turn that feels like a precursor to a wave turn and goes right up next to the lift hill, providing the feeling of being hit by supports, a thing you will find often on this ride with its multiple near misses. From there, you will enter the jerkiest part of the ride, the sidewinder. The train slows a ton in this element and will throw you forward every time. Be aware. But from here, you go around a 270 degree helix. Um, with minimal banking at the end, it gives you a ton of laterals. And during this helix, you go mere feet again from another ride, this is the zoom flume or the log flume and from here you're going to go into the best and most intense part of the ride these inline twists are whippy smooth and intense is actually one of my favorite inversion sequences on any coaster but the ending on the racer deserves to move a little slower and give you a breather uh, you'll go around a very dull turn and then through an s-bend 
and then into a very smooth stop on the brakes, ending your 2,169 foot ride. This ride has a crazy history. It is one of the best SLCs. I give this ride an eight out of 10. It's near misses are amazing. The ride's intense. It's pretty smooth all around, tracks well, and is very whippy. It's an absolute blast and honestly is better than the Batman the Ride clone in the same state. And it's worth a visit to Maurice Piers just for this ride. So let me know in the comments what you think of Nor'easter, if you've ridden it. Are there any funny stories you have from other SLCs? I'd love to hear them. Thank you for watching, and if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe. If you enjoyed, leave the video a like, and I appreciate it. I'll uh, see you next time.